So let's look at a high level view of the mobile standards evolution of the physical layer. The fire layer stands for the physical layer, which is the signaling layer. And we'll start with frequency division multiple access. So let's consider that we have a, uh, a system which is sending, I'm just going to draw them as Gaussian pulse shapes. So this represent this is a symbol, represents some bits. Maybe if it's binary, then it's either positive or negative. And uh, if you want to know about the Gaussian pulse shape, there's a video on the channel on pulse shaping filters. But these are being sent in the time domain. Uh, as ones and zeros, or ones and minus ones, and then you multiply this by a carrier, uh, which is at the frequency of transmission of your antennas. So here's a carrier at a higher frequency, and this multiplication, what does it do in the frequency domain? If we look at the Fourier transform, then what we're going to have is a, a, si a signal, which is at a particular cent and a Gaussian, the Fourier transform of a Gaussian shape is a Gaussian, uh, as, as we know. And so this is in the frequency domain, then we're going to have uh, something here at uh, occupying a bandwidth around the carrier frequency. So this is a carrier frequency at F1. And this is for a single user, but if we had a collection of these uh, users here, and if we had a number of each user in this set is sending all the time at this data rate. So this is T, 2T, and so on. Uh, then we have another waveform at a different carrier frequency. Uh, let's say it's a higher carrier frequency. Then the second waveform, I'm actually going to draw that in a red pen, the higher frequency, to indicate the second one. In, in an FDMA system, that puts another signal there, and they're separated in frequency. A couple of things that you need here is you need a guard band. So some of the important factors here, you need a guard band. Um, uh, guard band. And so this would be important for implementation. You need a guard band. And, uh, but it's a good, a good uh, aspect of it is that they're separated in frequency, these two users. And uh, equalization is at this data rate here, this symbol rate here, which is something that's uh, that's not too hard to do when you have multi-path. Okay, so this is FDMA. So then there's another, uh, we think to ourselves, well, how can we be more efficient than FDMA? Well, some of these data signals and some of these, like a voice conversation, you're not transmitting all the time. You could divide up time and allocate time between the different users. So then, if, how do we look at this? Well, we, if we send at a higher rate, we can take all of the symbols from this block here and we could send them faster. So we send them at a higher symbol rate and then we could have another user who then sends after this. Okay, so then what do we need? This is dividing up time, so you send quicker and then you don't send, so that's the blue user. And then the red user doesn't send and then starts sending. And then you go back to, if there were two users, you go back to the blue user, send some more data, and back to the red user, and so on. So this is time division multiple access. You have to send them in a shorter period of time because you now have to wait and for the other user before you can start again. Okay, so in this case, this gets multiplied. This is the two different users. They get multiplied by the same carrier. Now, just one carrier here. So this is the same carrier. So what does it look like in the frequency domain? Well, in the frequency domain now, we have one... Uh, they, because you're sending more quickly, therefore you use more of the frequency band. So you're, the, the frequency bands are wider and use more for the user, but it's time division between the users. That's how you have the multiple access. So what do we have here? What are the challenges here? Well, you need guard bands in the time domain. Uh, so just like you had guard bands in the frequency domain over for FDMA, now you need guard bands in the time domain. And here, what's the, another downside is that equalization is more difficult now because the bits, the symbols are being sent in a shorter time slot. So any multi-path propagation, the two different paths, if you've got a difference in the delays of two different paths, they're going to affect these signals much more than these signals. 
these signals take longer to send a symbol, so the time difference in the paths would have to be longer to affect this signal. So here, those same time paths are going to really affect this and you need to do equalization. So these are the, the good sides and the downsides of FDMA and TDMA. And these go into the second generation mobile communications. And so this is, uh, for in this case, this was GSM, had both TDMA and FDMA in second generation mobile in GSM, which is a European based standard. So what about an, then another way of doing multiple access? So there's the concept of CDMA, code division multiple access. So in this case, what do we have here? We have our signals, and we can uh, I can draw them here uh, more back at the this uh, time uh, back like frequency division multiple access time scales. We're not sending the symbols so fast, but what we now do. So again, we have a collection of these. I'm using these brackets to indicate lots of different versions of this for the different users. Here the different users are in the different colours, but here there's a set of them. Each user sends at this kind of a rate. So now we're going to take, for each of those users, we're going to multiply in CDMA by a digital code. Okay, so that code, we call this uh, codes made up of chips, and, and this code rate is a much higher rate than the symbol rate. And so we have one code for one user, and we have a different code for another user. These are digital codes which are orthogonal to each other and that's an important uh, aspect of the two. And then of course we multiply by the carrier. So they all then get multiplied by the same carrier. And so in the frequency domain for this, for CDMA, in the frequency domain, uh, so this is again time, this is the so what we do for CDMA is we insert in between the, the symbols and the carrier, we insert codes. And so in the frequency domain now, we have the same system as we did for, uh, uh, um, for TDMA because these chips are like the high rate symbols here. We've taken low rate uh, symbols, but we multiply the chips and then they become at roughly the same uh, rate as here. So we're spreading out in frequency. We're taking low rate symbols. We're using codes to spread out in frequency. That's what we, uh, this is what we, uh, it's what we call spreading, frequency uh, spreading. As a CDMA is often called spread spectrum. And, uh, and this is what it looks like in the frequency domain. So now we have uh, spread in spectrum. All the signals, all the users send all of the time, just like they did for FDMA. In FDMA, they were separated by different analog carriers, like this. In CDMA, they're separated by different codes, like this, and they're using all of the frequency all of the time. So it's often said FDMA uses some of the frequency. Each user uses a different part of the frequency, so use some of the frequency all of the time. TDMA used all of the frequency some of the time, and CDMA uses all of the frequency all of the time and is separated by the codes. So what are the challenges here? Um, so the, the good thing here is uh, we don't have the guard bands, so we don't have to worry about guard bands, so this is good for CDMA, uh, but we do have to worry about these being orthogonal. Um, and, and in cellular systems, distributing those amongst a cellular system, all fully orthogonal codes is, uh, is not easy. So in practice, they're not fully orthogonal. So that's a challenge for CDMA. Another challenge for CDMA is in multipath. We, we understood that this was uh, easier for multipath and FDMA than it was for TDMA. And here we've got it's these chips at a high rate. And so the chips are going to be affected by multipath. And you can overcome that to some degree with a rake receiver by correlators correlating to each of the different multipaths, but it's still a challenge. So you have two challenges for CDMA, the orthogonal codes, you need them to be orthogonal or close to orthogonal, and you need to do the equalization. Uh, and this one here, so this was 2G mobile GSM, CDMA was 2, 2G mobile um, called uh, IS95, which was a USA based standard. So this was Europe and this is USA. So what about moving to 3G and 4G uh, and what, what's the modulation format there? And this is 
So, so what, what do we have as, still as a challenge? We've got these orthogonal codes and we've got the equalization. So what could we do about equalization? We think back to FDMA. For FDMA, equalization was easier because these symbols lasted for a longer period of time than these ones. So I wonder, what, I wonder if we can do something to get rid of the guard band, which was the challenge for FDMA. And that's actually what OFDM does. And so we have OFDM with multiple users. And if you wanted to know about OFDM and how it does that, we've got a video on the channel on OFDM. But essentially OFDM is taking the symbols and you put them into a vector. So this is x1, x2, x3 and so on. This is like the plus one, plus one, minus one. So instead of sending your symbols in time uh, as we did there or sending the symbols in time as we did here or here, plus one, plus one, minus one. So instead of sending them in time, we put them in a vector, those symbols, they're just complex numbers, and we put them into an inverse discrete Fourier transform. And as I said, there's a video on this, uh, but this gives us a time domain signal which has all the characteristics of the frequencies that are in uh, from the data. And so this is OFD, and the MA part of it is that again, you have multiple users all doing this, and in the frequency domain, they have uh, you select the sum of these x's to be zero, and that's where that's that's the values where the other users can send signals, and the subcarriers where other users can send signals, and so then this comes out, and these are sync pulses now, and so they overlap. Uh, oops, uh, they overlap here uh, as sync pulses, and then the other users are overlapping in the neighbouring sync pulses. And the reason you can do this now, where you don't need the guard periods, uh, is because we've got improved carrier synchronization algorithms uh, between the different users uh, in modern electronic technology. So now we can have, because if, if we can make those carrier frequencies, this was F2 and minus F2, this was F2, uh, if we can make those oscillators in our receiver and transmitters much more accurate, then we can get away from using Gaussian pulse shapes and we can get away from having this have, having to have this guard band and we can put all of the carriers very closely spaced, in fact overlapping exactly uh, in this way and use sync functions in the frequency domain uh, for our carriers. And, and a, one user, for example, can use uh, these carrier frequency, these sub-channels here and this sub-channel up here and intersperse with the sub-channels that the other users are using. And so the benefits of this pr process, the OFDMA, and this is in 3G, so this is 3G and 4G using OFDMA, the benefits of here are that, again, as with CDMA, everyone sends all of the time, and so this is a good process here, and but it's they don't use all of the frequency all the time, uh, but they do use different components across the frequency band, and you can intersperse and decide which ones out to be allocated to which different users, and you don't have to pay the penalty of a guard band. So it's uh, it needs accurate synchronization, and that's something that's true. Uh, it, the equalization is easy because just like in FDMA, the symbols now, each of these symbols lasts for the full time. Uh, and again, if you want to see what that means, each of these symbols lasting for the full time, you should uh, look at the video on OFDM, uh, which is linked to, uh, below this video. Uh, so it's easy equalization, it doesn't need the guard periods, um, and it's actually another driver for it is that, it's, that the advent of the fast Fourier transform chips have meant that this is possible. So the, the two reasons, why wasn't it possible before when we were talking about FDMA? Well, we didn't have synchronization that could be so accurate, and we didn't have uh, fast Fourier transform chips uh, back in the second generation uh, of mobile communications that we have today. So we can implement this very efficiently in, in, in an FFT chip. And that what this then ability to choose all these different subcarriers means is we've got very flexible resource allocation. So ex extremely flexible resource allocation, which is one of the main reasons, along with the equalization, why it was chosen for 3G and 4G. There is a penalty, you need to have a cyclic prefix. 
uh, and the cyclic prefix is discussed in another one of the videos which is uh, linked at the bottom of this video, but you do need a cyclic prefix. So it's important to understand that. You don't get something for nothing. So that's, the, that's essentially the penalty, the main penalty uh, that you pay for OFDMA. But these, is, these are the reasons and the signals to understand what has driven the choices and the evolution from the initial 2G mobile to the more, much more flexible uh, 3G and 4G at the physical layer. So don't forget to like this video, it helps others to find the video, and subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the webpage which has a full categorised list of all of the videos which can help you uh, in all of the topics.